Good morning, everyone. I am the Reverend Joan Javier Duval, Minister of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier, and I use she, her pronouns. Our opening words this morning are by the Reverend Leslie Takahashi. To worship means to consider that which has worth. Today, we consider with gratitude the many gifts of this community, the opportunity to be affirmed in who we are and to offer that affirmation to others, the chance to stand up together to help remake the world in the ideal of justice, the freedom to choose one's own path to truth and to learn from the travelogues of others, the space to expand one's own spirit and to reconnect after busy or humdrum weeks with the sustaining truths of one's life. Regular reminders that we must see our world through the lens of love and the aspiration to consider all life as precious. For if all of it is made of stardust, how can it not be wondrous? So this morning, let's welcome all of these gifts with gratitude for they have been paid for with many currencies, the blood of the martyrs who died so that we can be free in our religion, the sweat of those who persisted in justice's name against hostility and adversity, the tears of those who struggled to build better lives for those in this life, the questions of our children as they understand the world anew and offer their understanding to us as a fresh lens. The laughter and joy of those giddy with the embrace of community, the dollars and cents of those who gave what they could and then stretched a little more. The infinite small acts of service that make the parts greater than the whole, done by those who knew themselves in sympathy with our purposes. So today we consider with gratitude and humility what it means to pay forward what has been paid forward for us. And now with all of this, let us enter into worship with gladness in our hearts. I'd like to uh, have you join me in this happy little song that was brought to us by Sally Armstrong, our former DRE here at the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. It's all about what it means to be a church community. And it goes like this. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together, all of us together, every single one. We are the church together. Thank you. 
this morning, as we officially launch our UCM 2021 annual pledge drive, I would like to introduce to you our stewardship committee. These nine church members have committed their time, creativity, and energy to supporting all of us in our shared ministry of stewardship. Through this shared ministry, we as a congregation engage in a spiritual practice of gratitude, generosity, and reciprocity. We foster care for our community within and beyond the church walls through sharing our resources, including our financial resources. This year's stewardship committee is co-chaired by Charlotte Root and Sue Stuckey. And joining Charlotte and Sue on the team are Elaine Ball, Brenda Bean, Claudia Clark, Scott Hess, John Poten, Brian Prendergast, and Peter Toms. You will be hearing from the committee throughout our pledge drive and committee members will be available after today's service during coffee hour for conversation. Thank you, Stewardship Committee, for your service. My name is Sue Stuckey, and today we kick off our annual all-member pledge drive. This year, titled Together We Thrive, I want to acknowledge that here at the Unitarian Church of Montpelier, we are all stewards of our faith. We minister to each other every day through our presence, our participation, and our financial gifts. We realize the amount each of us can give will always vary, but we welcome and cherish each gift given from the heart. Our handsome pledge drive packet is now in the mail and hopefully has already arrived in your mailbox with a big thanks to Brian Prendergast for his wonderful work. The packet contains a letter from the minister, a letter from the stewardship committee with a giving guide on the back, and is a return envelope with a printed pledge form under the flap. Please consider your gift carefully and generously, and then fill out and return the form by mail, or complete your pledge online at ucmbt.org. We're calling this year's pledge drive, Together We Thrive, because in spite of the pandemic, we persevere with everyone and everyone's support. Our loving, caring community will flourish and indeed thrive. Thank you. Charlotte. Thank you, Sue. It's such a joy to be here with you all this morning. Thank you all so much for your participation in this pledge drive and in all of the past pledge drives. It's such a pleasure to help serve this community through the stewardship com uh, committee and the gratitude and generosity ministry, especially this year as I've been joining with Sue Stuckey and the rest of the team. The theme Together We Thrive really, I feel, embraces this community in particular. We've been celebrating this theme for years now as we have been celebrating the love in this community in person through our gifts of love celebrations, among others. We enjoyed our gifts of love raffle last weekend in a virtual way. And we just wanna remind everyone what it is uh, to be together, to thrive together during this virtual pledge drive. We will so soon be back in presence with each other and be able to hug and mourn and celebrate together. But for the time being, we'll have to do the next best thing and celebrate virtually together. We'll be recreating the experience that we've had in previous pledge drives of the collaborative art banner this year with our logo printed on a large banner and um, a gratitude practice that we'll be starting today to fill in the banner as we receive pledges. The theme Together We Thrive really is built around this idea that the community, you, the community of UCM, really fuel everything that we do from the roots all the way up into the, to the leaves and flowers that germinate these pockets of beauty that we create in our community. We start at home. We start at home with our spiritual development, with our lifespan spiritual exploration, and by nurturing our children and our elders and um, our local community. And we spread that work through the leaves and the, so through the branches and the leaves of the work that we do through the Unitarian Universalist Association and in our local community, uh, Montpelier community. I think this church has done an incredible job this year of maintaining that feeling of closeness and commitment, even though we've been uh, worshiping virtually for so long. And I'll turn it over now to Joan and Virtus to start this gratitude practice that will continue to bring us closer together through this month 
through our pledge drive as we remember what it means to be grateful for the presence of this community in our everyday lives. Thank you all so much and I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you, Charlotte. Yes, yeah, so today we will begin adding leaves to our Together We Thrive tree of gratitude and generosity. Each leaf added to our tree represents one pledge made towards supporting our 2021-2022 church year budget. As of today, we already have 23 pledges made by our UCM board members and other church leaders and members. And so we will be adding 23 leaves to our tree. And these pledges total just over $121,000, getting us more than a third of the way to our total goal. Thank you to all for these early pledges. And this morning, we wanna populate our tree of gratitude and generosity with your own words. We are working on getting um, the video back on our tree of gratitude and generosity for you so that you can watch as we're doing this. As we do that, I invite you to reflect for a few moments now on what you might be appreciating this morning about this church community. What gift from this community are you feeling grateful for? You are invited to add that word or that phrase into the Zoom chat or the Facebook comments. And either Virtus or I will read some of what you're sharing aloud as we add your words and phrases to those 23 leaves that will be added to our gratitude and generosity tree. I'll give you a moment to add what you'd like into the chat. And we're going to work on getting a video up on the tree. I am seeing in the chat forgiveness and kindness, compassion, holding one another during times of grief, compassionate words, empathy, sunshine, connection, fellowship that we persist, warmth and spaciousness during worship, deep listening, comfort, community, children's chapel, working to stay well, steadfastness, the daily phone reflections that I've been sharing, growth and friendship, Thank you everyone for all that you are filling in these words of gratitude. I will continue to let them flow. I won't be reading all of them this morning, but wow, thank you, thank you all. You are all both the receivers and the givers of these gifts. Thank you everyone for your words, your gratitude and your generosity. And now we move to our musical interlude. And speaking of gratitude, I am so grateful for the choir, not just for their voices, but for their willingness to learn new technology. I'm grateful for the beautiful pictures from Tamara and also these words of gratitude and uh, appreciation expressed by others in the congregation. Please enjoy.
In the letter that I sent to you all as part of this year's pledge drive, I reflected back on the Sunday almost exactly one year ago when we were together in this sanctuary and church building to launch last year's pledge drive. Although we were in the practice of holding two services on Sundays, we had come together for just one worship service that day. A gifts of love celebration was planned for after the service in the vestry and the children had decorated the whole space with festive red and pink hearts. Concern over the novel coronavirus was mounting, but had not yet led to the shutting down of gatherings, large or small. Mostly, we were starting to wash our hands with more frequency and beginning to stock up on hand sanitizer. Since that last Sunday that our sanctuary was open for gathered worship, each of our lives has been vastly transformed. Our life as a church community has endured a state of operating virtually with our buildings, doors closed for longer than many of us could have conceived. During this time, I have been amazed and inspired by the care and the commitment that you all have shown one another and our broader community. Next week, we will do more reflecting back on the year that we have all experienced. And today I will just say how grateful I am for each and every one of you and the community of love and service that you build together. Religious and spiritual community is expressed in different forms across many traditions across the world. Jews gather in shul or synagogue, Muslims gathered in prayer form a jama. Buddhist community is called Sangha, pagans gather in coven, Quakers come together in meeting, practitioners of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism gather in satsang to learn from spiritual teachers. Community, the gathering, physical or otherwise, of people in shared purpose is essential to almost all spiritual paths and religions and Unitarian Universalism is no exception. It is with and amongst other people, other tender-hearted, searching, joyful and broken-hearted people that we lament and praise, laugh, cry and give thanks and learn and grow. Our worship theme this month is commitment and you may have noticed that the words community and commitment have something in common. They share a Latin root in the prefix com, which means with. This shared etymological source speaks to the integral role of commitment in community. Christine D. Pohl, a Christian theologian and professor of social ethics, speaks to this connection in the following passage from her book, living into community, cultivating practices that sustain us. She writes, communities in which we grow and flourish last over time and are built by people who are faithful to one another and committed to a shared purpose. Community life certainly has moments of incredible beauty and intense personal connection, but much of it is daily and ordinary. Our lives are knit together, not so much by intense feeling as by shared history, tasks, commitments, stories, and sacrifices. Even while we as a community have had to endure a year of church life physically apart and will likely do so for a little while longer, we have continued to knit our lives together through our shared purpose and commitments, welcoming one another, caring for one another, and reaching beyond the metaphorical walls of our church community to be of service to our neighbors. Over the past several months, you have lovingly crafted and written Valentines to other church friends, 
You have put together and delivered thoughtful care packages to families. You have donated items for boxed lunches and dinners shared with those experiencing food insecurity in our community. You have shown up for worship on whatever device you might have available and offered your presence to others. You have facilitated and participated in chalice circles, offering attention and careful listening, as well as gentle reminders when someone is still muted. You have called and written postcards to voters around the country to promote voting and democracy. You have served on committees tending to the sometimes tedious but necessary administrative tasks that enable this congregation to run smoothly. We continue even through this challenging time to nurture this community as a place of flourishing and thriving through the daily and ordinary ways that we show up and with one another. I also recognize that this past year of virtual church has been incredibly challenging for some of you. Some in this community have let go of or loosened your commitments in order to have the space and the time to take care of yourself or because the loss of what was has been too painful and it's been too difficult to hold on as the church has moved forward in these unusual and uncertain times. Letting go of commitments is also part of the journey. And I hope that in due time, those who have let go or drifted away from your commitment to this community will return. You are loved and your presence among us matters. Our commitments, whether to this church community or other groups, to our loved ones or to ourselves, ultimately shape who we are. The philosopher and theologian Henry Nelson Wyman has said, inevitably in our lives, we commit ourselves to something, whether worthy or not. The direction and intensity of our loyalties give shape and meaning to our lives. Loyalties, commitments, covenants, the promises we make to one another, these are the things that tell us to what we belong. By doing so, they tell us who we are. Our commitments can provide a mirror on what matters to us and where we find meaning. Commitments made in community can show us where and how we find belonging. The reason that we make the commitments we do is also important to notice. Sometimes we make commitments because of feeling a sense of responsibility, duty, and obligation. At times we might unintentionally make commitments out of habit or inertia or familiarity. And we can also make commitments in response to a sense of gratitude. In feeling thankful for what we have received, we commit to giving back in some way. All these sources of commitment have their place. And at any given time, or in any given relationship, all of these sources of your commitment might be at work. What is important, I believe, is that we are each able to make and to sustain the many commitments of our lives with joy. Commitments that are not sustained with joy can lead to resentment down the road. So when you reflect on the commitments that you are making in your life, I invite you to consider how you might joyfully sustain the commitments that are most in alignment with your beliefs and values. Today, as we launch the church's annual pledge drive, we turn our attention to the financial commitment that we make to this spiritual community. This group of people gathered in shared purpose, gathered even in these times in a virtual way. When you make a financial pledge to this congregation, you are making a commitment to share of your financial resources with this community so that we can fulfill our mission and live our shared values in the world. 
Through our budgeting process each year, we discern together what our needs are and how the generosity of our financial gifts might meet those needs. Each year, at least 80% of our income comes from your pledged contributions. A primary goal in next year's budget is to continue to offer and expand health insurance coverage for our staff, as well as their dependents. We also hope to address the facilities, equipment, and technology needs that will allow us to safely reopen our building when the conditions are right, and to continue offering spiritually nourishing programming, both in person and virtually. The financial resources we gather as a community support the full and robust ministry of this congregation in its many forms, from Sunday morning programming for children and youth, to explorations of racism for adults, to serving human need through direct financial assistance and meals, to educating ourselves on the best ways to protect the earth. This is all ministry that we do together, staff and volunteers, members and friends alike. And the pooling of our collective resources, each of us giving according to our capacity and our commitment is an act of faith and trust and ultimately hope. I want to recognize that the past year of the pandemic has had disparate and unequal financial impacts on each of us. Even before the pandemic, we each lived with different financial resources available to us. Some in this community without any care or concern over financial stability and others just trying to get by paycheck to paycheck. The economic impacts of the pandemic have exas exacerbated these inequalities in profound ways. Each year, the church receives a wide range of pledges and financial contributions, and all of them are received with gratitude. As you consider making a pledge towards next year's budget, I invite you to reflect both on your capacity as well as your commitment. With deep gratitude, I, along with my spouse, make an annual pledge to support the budget of this congregation. We are so thankful for the ministry that provides a nurturing environment for our son and for each of us. We are inspired by your compassion, your care, and your commitment to the values that give life to this congregation's actions in the world. We are fortunate that our income and financial status have not been severely impacted during the pandemic. And so we are increasing our pledge to a total fair share contribution of $4,500. This is where our capacity and our commitment meet to support the mission and ministry of this congregation in the coming year. Your own discernment of where your capacity and your commitment meet will lead you to your own number. And whatever that number is, thank you. Thank you for dedicating your time and your energy to giving it careful thought. Thank you for thinking about the needs of this community and for making it a practice to give generously from your own sense of gratitude. Thank you for all of the ways that you give of yourself from a place of love and gratitude so that we can all thrive together. And now I will invite us to join in our closing song, The Fire of Commitment. You are welcome to rise and body your spirit and thank you to Virtus for putting together this video, incorporating the vocals of the song's composer, Jason Shelton, and images from our church community since the start of the church year.
from the light of days remembered burns a beacon bright and clear guiding hands and hearts and spirits into faith set free from fear when the fire of commitment sets our mind and soul ablaze when our hunger and our passion meet to call us on our way when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can be As I share these words of benediction, wanted to spotlight as well our tree of gratitude and generosity. As we draw our service to a close, may you go from this time of worship with a fire of commitment kindled within. May you know yourself as the gift that you are to this community and to the world. And may gratitude foster your deepest commitments and the fulfillment of your promises for a world infused with love and justice, a world sustained by our care.